have some announcements today because it wouldn't be a Sunday without announcements. And the first one is indeed a, a challenging one. We had been hoping to have a limited number of people back in the sanctuary on November 1st. And given that the schools are not opening, that the level of COVID infection in Danbury is increasing rather than decreasing, we are not going to be able to do that. Um, we will continue to have our Zoom services. I will continue to post those to YouTube after the fact. And we will continue to look forward to that time when we are able to be together uh, physically. But for the moment, uh, that is not going to be possible. And we can't tell you when that will be. Uh, we don't want to say it'll be in two weeks or three weeks or four weeks, um, only to have to walk that back. But as soon as it looks like it's going to be possible, we will let people know. And then we will start moving forward in terms of getting people signing up for those services. Um, so thank you for your patience. I know this is challenging. It's very hard for me too to not have a sense of how we're moving forward. Um, but at this point, we continue to be safe. We continue to protect the most vulnerable members of our community. We continue to follow the directives that we're getting through the United Church of Christ and through all of the various governmental sorts who offer their leadership. Um, I was just reading this morning, another church, um, not locally, this one was in South Carolina, has become the, uh, the locus of 100 COVID cases and three deaths because they were packing in. Um, so we are not doing that. Thank you for your patience and thank you for your ongoing prayers for all of us as we weather this storm. Our safe reopening committee will be meeting right after worship today. So we're continuing to look at how we can do things as safely as possible. Keep looking in on folks. Um, we're isolated. We don't need to be isolated. We can talk with each other on the phone. We can um, you know, FaceTime as we've been doing, but help make sure that those folks that you're not seeing here on Sunday morning are being loved and welcomed and cared for. Um, pay attention to all of the social media. This last week, um, we had several things going up. Uh, we had Becky's video, we had my video on voting, we had uh, just a variety of things. Keep paying attention to that. Um, always looking for new people to be part of producing these services. And I was just thanking Michelle before we got started with the recording uh, for doing the scripture reading this week. The more people we have doing it, the easier it will be. Um, and not to jump the gun too far, but as we enter the season of Advent, uh, we will be looking for folks to um, do candle lightings at home and to capture those on video so that we can include them in our services. So that's something that we want to invite you to consider doing. Um, we are still doing the work of the church, uh, bringing food to the St. James Food Pantry. We just had folks at Dorothy Day yesterday, and I believe that went well from what I could tell. Uh, we'll get a little glimpse of that uh, later on in the service. Uh, was anybody who was there at Dorothy Day, is there anyone who would like to speak to that? Hi, Paul. Um, Hi. We served um, 55 meals at the door, which was the goulash and some peas and then a sandwich bag to go. And then we also brought 30 meals over to Super 8 Motel um, at Exit 4. Um, having the hot meal was great. So I'm glad, you know, thank you to Val. She's the one who's coordinating the meal part. Um, and then stay tuned for November. Um, we need just five people down there to help. And then I'm sure Val will send out what we need for a meal if we're gonna do our goulash or if we're gonna do something different. Um, it'll be Thanksgiving weekend next month. All right, so a thank you to everybody who either provided food or who went down to help serve. And uh, Thanksgiving weekend, we're at it again. So thank you all. Bev is still in the church office. So keep checking in. If you need anything, just give her a call. Um, 
the church stands by to help you. Uh, the deacons fund is available if there's anybody who's having trouble. Um, one of the things about the deacons fund is that usually on communion Sundays, we have the special offering plate that's set out uh, to encourage people to give specifically to that. Since we haven't been meeting face to face, um, we haven't had that offering plate out. So I do wanna let you know that as you're making your pledge for the church, as you're doing your online giving, you can also make a gift specifically for the Deacons Fund, and that will help meet some of the other needs of our community for people who are facing financial tough times. So please keep your pledge current, and as you can make special donations as well, that's also a good way to do that with the online giving. Are there any other announcements that we need to hear? I have two. Okay. The first one is we, so uh, I, for the reopening committee, we have started letting some groups meet in the dining room because um, it's a little cold outside for people to meet outside. Um, they, I'm still kind of working with the Boy Scouts because they had some overlap in when they meet um, or the Scouts in general to figure out which days they're gonna be there. Um, but also, if for some reason you do have to come to church, like I do on a regular basis, to um, do the deposits, um, there is a sign-in sheet upstairs as well for anybody, any of our members that have to go into church, and that should be filled out. Um, it's on the uh, pew that's in the hallway. Um, there is, I, I have to finish putting the bucket together, but there is a bucket with cleaning supplies. Um, to clean any area you might be in and, and the doorknobs and such uh, if for some reason you have to go into church. The other announcement I had is um, Danbury Appalachia Service Project is moving forward with the hope that we will be able to travel down to Appalachia this summer. Um, we will be selling wreaths and poinsettias if anybody's interested. I'll be sending out a flyer for that shortly um, um, as one of our fundraisers. But it also, if you know anybody who is 14 years and finishing their freshman year in high school or older um, and who might be interested in going, feel free to contact me and I can give information out about that. All right. Thank you for both of those, Sherry. So last week we had a uh, video presentation that we got from the United Church of Christ uh, with the three great loves as the theme. Uh, love of children was the one last week. And this week we continue with love of neighbor. And I will sing of your love. Hello, my name is Reverend Darrell Goodwin. Um, I'm bringing you greetings from the Iowa, Nebraska, and South Dakota conferences of the United Church of Christ. I was thinking about how we invest in one another and how um, when we sow into our local congregations, how it really is transformative for who we're called to be as the United Church of Christ. During the midst of this pandemic, many of us have no longer been able to meet physically in person. And what I've been inspired by is though we have not been able to physically meet in person, we have still continued to meet around issues of justice. At my local church, which is where uh, my office happens to be as conference staff, Countryside United Church of Christ, um, I was driving to the office Office, uh, checking in and we had all the things in place you know you had to have your mask on and you had to be sanitizing and there was spray for you um, and everything like that but as I was driving into the parking lot um, I saw volunteers from our congregation lined up in the parking lot and I saw families who were driving into the parking lot the system was they would drive into the parking lot and pop their trunk and there would be members of Countryside United Church of Christ grabbing a box of food with their gloves and their masks on, and they would simply put the food in the trunk, 
close the trunk and then families were able to drive off. When I think about how do I sow into the kingdom of God, when I think about how do I sow into this time of pandemic, I think I'm sowing into being church when we're able to feed those who are hungry, when we're able to accompany those who are in are having and experiencing their greatest need and to know that their church is still present for them, their church is still there, their church is still available. Again, though not physically meeting in the building, even if it meant we would be outside in the parking lot giving people what they need. I think this is who we're called to be. So I think as you're considering how to sow into ministry, how to sow into being together, find out how to sow into the ministries of your local church so that we can be more of the church together. I know that some of you are seeing Reverend Goodwin speak and you're scratching your head and you're going, that name seems familiar. Reverend Goodwin is indeed our newly called executive conference minister for the Southern New England Conference. So he has yet to join us here in New England, but we will be seeing a lot more of him in the future. So it's nice to have him joining us via video from his prior uh, position as Associate Conference Minister elsewhere. Uh, let us continue our worship as we hear the intro. Seize the day. Do, do, do. Another day, another month, another year. Time, where does it go? We will never know. The seasons come around once more. The seasons come around once more. The voice of nature loudly cries. The leafless trees that never lie. Changes of time we can't deny. Time, where does it go? We will never know. The seasons come around once more. The seasons come around once more. Do, do, do. Come what may seize the day Winter days are closing in Twelve months then to run again Another day, another month, another year Time, where does it go? We will never know The seasons come around
Gather together to hear stories of faith and courage. Listen for the ways God has acted among us. Our ancestors in the faith listened for God's word. They dared to believe God's promises. Leaders like Moses and Paul saw evidence of God's work. They believed they were face to face with God's truth. They looked beyond the present. They, looked, they lived for dreams not yet realized. Many felt God's love in knowing Jesus. They experienced a new relationship with neighbors. We have come. We have come. Seeking community centered in Christ. We want to feel God's presence as we worship. And our opening hymn is, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And just a, a note, today is Reformation Sunday. And this is one of several hymns that were written by Martin Luther.
God, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the earth was formed, long before there were people on this planet, you were fashioning life in its myriad forms. Out of the billions of years you have been creating, our lives have come to this moment of meeting. We stand in awe before you, amazed to discover that you care about us, tiny blips on the screen of eternity. O oh God, we want our lives to count for something. Show us how to fit into your plans. Amen. As God's people, we pause and reflect on our lives. We see the places where we have gone astray, those spots that are most in need of transformation. And so we offer our prayer of confession, trusting God to hear and to offer us the grace of forgiveness. Let us pray together. O oh God, we have missed your signs and wonders because we are so busy creating our own. Those around us who pretend to be your prophets offer little to which we aspire. Yet we would pray with the psalmist, satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love so we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Where is the meaning we have missed in all our striving? Does Jesus hold the key when he says, love God with all your being and love your neighbor as yourself? O oh God, we want to make sense out of life. Help us to follow your way. Amen. Friends, the very act of confessing our sin opens ourselves, opens our hearts, opens our spirits to receiving God's transforming grace. And so I declare to you this morning that our sins are indeed forgiven, that once more, God offers us that forgiving grace, that grace that remakes us today and every day. Thanks be to God. Amen. than a hundred years ago, when ships were powered by sails, the sailors would have to work together. They would have to have ways to time pulling on ropes together. And what they would do is they would sing sea shanties, like what you hear here. I'm here at Paintley Park in Rowayton, Connecticut, gathered with some good friends. These are people that I gather with every month to sing sea shanties. When we get together in church, we sing shanties too, except we don't call them that. We call them hymns. They're the songs of our faith that help us work together. They remind us who we are. And just like the sea shanties that people used to sing would help them coordinate the work, the songs that we sing, whether it's Amazing Grace or Blessed Be the Tie or, or any of the other songs that we sing on a Sunday morning, help us see ourselves as part of a community. They help us see the work as something that we all share in. And so my hope for you is that you will sing some songs, the hymns that we sing together, but also some great old songs that remind us of where we've come from. Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you for music, for music that helps us work together, just like sailors used to work together pulling on lines. We ask that you would help us as your church to do your holy work and to do it singing. Amen.
The 34th chapter, the last chapter in the book of Deuteronomy. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho, and the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negeb and the plain, that is, the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. The Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired, and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. Then the period of mourning for Mo Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, because Moses had laid his hands on him, and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land, and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. This is the reading from Matthew 22, verse 34 through 46. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hangs all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question, what do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David, he said to them, How is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I put your enemies under your feet? If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare ask him any more questions. I'd invite you to join me in a spirit of prayer. Speak to us, O God. Though we might hear your word echoing across the ages and reverberating in our lives. Amen. There's a tradition that says that Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Well, today's reading from Deuteronomy, the last little bit of the story tells of Moses' death, which does indeed raise the question of how Moses wrote it. What we do know, of course, is that Moses did not actually sit down and write those five books, even we call them, even though we call them the five books of Moses. They were compiled by the scribes, by the priests, by the people who were telling the stories of faith and writing them down. But in today's reading, we find that ending, that tagline for Moses. We've been following him for the last several weeks as he has been 
going to tell Pharaoh to let the people go as he has led the people through the wilderness with manna, with water from the rock. We have seen the, the people coming to him with their complaints, and we have heard Moses offer God's wisdom for them as he tried to lead them to the promised land. But today, in our final reading from Leviticus, we see Moses on a mountaintop where God has placed him, looking into the promised land and being told that he can see it, that he can never go there. That's an image that Martin Luther King used when he said, I have been to the mountaintop, that he could see that future for the people where there would be equality and justice. This notion of seeing into the promised land is something that resonates for us. Moses couldn't actually get there. And we can't either. Because our vision always goes farther than our ability to travel. For Moses, who brought the commandments to the people, he stopped there. But Jesus, who came later, who was able to, to continue God's work, who was able to have a hand in bringing justice, was able to reach back to the work that Moses had done on God's behalf. And we find today that reading from the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus is asked, what's the greatest commandment? It's a trick question, of course. And Jesus gives a trick answer. When he says, oh, the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all your soul, with all of your mind. And the second one is just like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus couldn't have offered the double commandment had it not been for the work of Moses. We all follow in the footsteps of those who have made the path for us. Today, we celebrate Reformation Sunday. And I was commenting to one of my Catholic friends recently who was saying, well, what is this Reformation Sunday? And I said, well, it's, it's the Sunday where we go, we're not Catholic. <laughs> except it's not really anymore. I know at one point it was. Our congregational heritage carries with it a certain amount of negative history, including the old Pope Night celebrations in Boston, where the Pope was burned in effigy as congregationalists said exactly, <laughs> But that's not what we do anymore. We don't need to do that anymore. Because we are not just trying to define ourselves over and against what has gone before. Any more than Jesus would have said, well, you know, Moses was just wrong. No, we take the good that has come before us and we try and make it better. That's what the Reformation that we celebrate is the work of Martin Luther and Calvin and Zwingli, those people who stepped away from the old ways to try and bring new insight and new life to the church. And of course, our Catholic siblings have also done a lot of reforming over the years too. Here in Norwalk, where I live, my backyard backs up onto the Church of St. Thomas the Apostle. And they have a carillon that, that plays songs every day. And I was delighted a while back. I was in the backyard and I suddenly heard a mighty fortress is our God being played on the Catholic Church's carillon. And I thought to myself, 500 years have passed and the Catholics are playing Martin Luther. And of course they are. 
because the promise of God as being our mighty fortress, as carrying us through the trials of life, of helping us stand firm in faith, are true whether we're Catholic or Protestant. We all are on a journey together without any thumbing of our noses at anyone. Martin Luther, back in 1517, had his list of his 95 theses that he tacked up to the door in Wittenberg, Germany. He wanted to change things and make them better. Our pilgrim ancestors left England and went to Leiden in Holland so that they could have their own religious freedom, so they could do things differently. And then they crossed the Atlantic to come to what would eventually become the United States so that they could do things differently. And it didn't always go well. There were plenty of times where, where the wrong decisions were made. We always make those poor decisions as we travel, don't we? We make the wrong turns. We have to go around the clover leaf a couple times before we can figure out where we're really headed. But in 1620, they arrived on these shores and did their best to, to craft a new city on a hill where people would be able to see God's presence. We're always doing that. We can't say, oh, Martin Luther did it. We can't say, oh, the pilgrims did it. We're called to a journey too, to a journey of reformation of doing things differently, of doing things in new ways that reach new people. And during this pandemic, that's precisely what we're doing. Pioneering new ways of being church, new ways of sustaining one another, new ways of doing God's work in the world, new ways of being God's stewards for all that we have and all that we are. May God bless us then as we live together as God's people, always reforming. Amen. Let us pray together. Loving God, we give you thanks for the stories of faith that inform our journeys. For Moses and Jesus, for those leaders of the church across the ages, for those who have held firm to traditions, and those who have offered reformation as well. We ask that you would help us, that we might live as your pilgrim people, that we might find new ways to live in this world, that we might find new ways to share our faith, that we might find new ways to build love and justice, and we ask your presence in all of that. We give you thanks, O oh God, for David and Rob and for their marriage. We ask that you would bless them as they live out the vows that they have made to one another, that you would grant them days and nights of love throughout their lives. We give you thanks for Bryn's successful surgery, and we ask that you would continue to be with her on her journey of healing. We ask that you would be with Jen's sister as she continues her recovery. We ask your blessing, O oh God, for those who mourn Justin's death, that you would be with his family, with his baby daughter, with his friends, those who shed tears and find their hearts breaking. We ask the power and sustenance of your spirit. We ask your blessing for Becky's family as her mom moves from assisted living to be with her sister. We ask that you would be present in this transition 
that you would grant grace and strength to each one. We ask your blessing for Nancy as she battles cancer. We give you thanks for the good news of Bob's tumors shrinking, and we ask that you would be with him as he deals with liver problems now. We look around us, oh God, and we see so much disruption due to the COVID pandemic. We see in our own community schools that are not opening. And we ask your blessing for all of the children who have been looking forward to getting back together with their friends and meeting their teachers who are now dealing with that disappointment. We ask that you would be with those educators who continue to find ways to teach their children. And we ask your blessing for all the parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles who are holding a fort at home for the children who are doing remote learning. We pray for our nation, O oh God, as we continue to deal with myriad problems, problems of this pandemic, problems of a record-breaking fire season and a record-breaking hurricane season, problems of politics where people threaten one another rather than engage in dialogue. And we ask your blessing for all who are voting now. Those who are voting early in states that permit it, those who are voting by mail or dropping off absentee ballots, and those who will vote on November 3rd, we ask your wisdom that we might move forward as your people together. We pray for ourselves as well, O oh God, offering you the most intimate prayers of our hearts, those that we do not speak, yet trust you to hear. Hear our prayers, O oh God. Answer, bless us, wrap us in your love and fill us with your grace. For we offer our prayers as your loving children. In the name of our brother Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hello, I am coming to you live from Dorothy J House. Uh, for my stewardship moment today, which I'll admit I forgot to do, and it's convenient that I was coming here. So, um, you all know who I am. I'm Heather, and I've been with the church, I think, at least seven years now. I really should check that. Um, I'm a single mom. Two kids came here because this church took care of me without even knowing me. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> anyway, I believe in giving my whole heart, and I give what I can financially. It's obviously many years very tight, so one of the reasons that I wanted to be here, at least today, is to give my time and talent. So I want to share with everybody that, yes, financial is important. Yes, we do need the financial, but honestly, if what you can give is your time and your talents to help us, then that's huge. Because coming here and being here to package the meals, give it out to the people, I'll kind of span around to show we have the food that we pack into bags to give out to the people to help them. Um, the mask will be going on. I'm in my room, this room by myself. Um, but just wanted to explain to everybody that every little bit helps. 
You don't have to feel like you have to give money all the time. If you can't, give a half hour of your day, give a few hours of your day. Anything that you can do to help, it's huge for the community. And we at King Street like to big a big message from our little church. So I miss you all. I hope that everyone's being well, staying safe, and um, please consider filling out your time and, t and talent card as well and sending that in or sending an email explaining that and we're happy to take anything that anybody can give us. Have a great day. Dear ones, we are called to live out holy love in our lives. We are called to go forward as God's people, doing God's work, seizing the day that we might indeed build the reign of God on earth. Let us then go forth as God's very own beloved community. And as we go, let us go forth in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the love of God, and in the power and communion of the Holy Spirit who is with us, now and always. Amen.